And welcome back to EH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and we are building janky decks in Commander here. And I got a fun one today. It is Pegasus Tribal. And this is one that I talked about before, I think maybe even multiple times on my 10 deck ideas video. I talked about doing an underwhelming tribe, a tribe that doesn't really have a lot of traditional support. And I think I specifically talked about Pegasus Tribal in one. I think this is a very doable idea. And so I'm gonna tackle it here. My rule when it comes to building underwhelming tribes is you should have at least one sort of Lord effect, right? And so the only Lord effect for Pegasi, and I'm going to use the word Pegasi, I don't know if that's proper or not for talking about multiple Pegasuses, but that's the word I'm using for this video. Archon of Sun's Grace, two white, white, Archon, three, four, flying lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. That's about as good as it gets, I'm afraid. Also, though, has Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. Now, this is kind of important for two reasons. One, we do have a fair amount of enchantments in this deck, so that will work for us. It's not enchantment tribal or nothing, but there is a fair amount. Also, we're making Pegasus tokens, and really... The actual Pegasus creatures aren't fantastic at all. I don't think you want to build around that. I do have a few in this deck, but basically the best route to go that I found for Pegasi is token creation because there is a lot of repeatable token makers like Archon of Sun's Grace, most notably Sacred Mesa and Pegasus Refuge. Those are probably the two best ones. Sacred Mesa, two and a white enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice Sacred Mesa unless you sacrifice a Pegasus, which you would think is not great for this deck. We don't want to be sacrificing them, but we will have a lot lying around, so that should not be an issue. And we can just pay one and a white to create a 1-1 one, one white Pegasus token. So we can really crank them out with this one. And Pegasus Refuge as well is a repeatable token maker for us. Three and a white enchantment. Pay two and discard a card and create a 1-1 one, one white Pegasus creature token with flying. So these are probably our two best bets in the deck and they are making 1-1 one, one flying Pegasi. So I guess I should probably talk about the commander that I'm going to be using for this deck. And interestingly enough, I already did this one on my channel recently, but I thought it was a great fit here and that is Rigo Streetwise Mentor and obviously Rigo not doing anything Pegasus Tribal here but whenever you attack a player or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power one or less draw a card and most of our Pegasi not all but most are going to be 1-1 one, one flying creatures so it's going to be very easy for us to get card draw off of Rigo and that works particularly good with our Pegasus Refuge because we have to keep discarding cards all the time, right? So if we can draw two or three cards off of our Rego every turn by attacking all of our opponents with our Pegasi, we'll easily have a nice full hand so that we can keep chucking those cards to make more tokens. And also, I wanted the Bant Colors. I wanted specifically Bant Colors, so I was looking for a Bant Commander that I could use for this deck, and I thought that was a great fit. And obviously, I will get to why we need Bant Colors for this deck. First of all, because Pegasus Refuge and Sacred Mesa are so important to this deck, we do need to have tutors unfortunately that's the way it goes when you have really underwhelming commanders and i'll just say right now this is not going to be an inexpensive deck it, it is going to have some pricey cards in it to make it better if you want to go even more janky you can maybe get rid of some of the tutors get rid of some of the more expensive cards it will make your life a little bit tougher but the version i made here i think is pretty darn good and in order to make it a little more competitive you do have to keep in some of the more expensive cards so i got idyllic tutor and moon blessed cleric in here They'll both search for those really important enchantments that we want. There is some other enchantments in this deck that I'll get to that are also really important. Sterling Grove is a great one in particular because it gives other enchantments we control Shroud. We can also sacrifice it to search our library for an enchantment, but preferably we actually want to leave this on the table so that our really important enchantments don't get targeted. Another great way in Bant to do this is Wargate. X, green, white, and a blue sorcery. Search your library for a permanent card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield then 
and shuffle. So this can go get some of those enchantments. It's going to cost a little bit more, but it'll put it directly into play. A couple other options we have here. Pegasus Stampede is another repeatable way that we can make those Pegasus tokens. One in a white sorcery. Create a 1-1 white Pegasus creature token with flying, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Also has buyback sacrifice a land. And later in the game, when we have lots of lands lying around, we can reuse this over and over again. Possibly, you know, we don't have any Crucible of World type of effects. I suppose you could throw that in here. I didn't really build around this card that much, but it is an option for us for repeatedly creating those tokens. And of course, we also have to have Storm Herd, eight white, white sorcery, create X11 one, one white. Pegasus creature tokens with flying where X is your life total. So this could be a nice game closer for us when we get up to that amount of mana. Obviously, because we're doing tokens, token doublers are going to be important here. And this is where we kind of get into the more expensive cards like Parallel Lives and Annoying Procession. Again, you could do this deck without these, but it is just so much better when every time we create a token with one of our effects, we're going to get two instead. Adrix and Nev will also work obviously this way. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted green and blue in the deck as well. I wanted the token doubling effects, and there's a few other effects that work really well with our Pegasi. Parallel Evolution and Second Harvest will also give us that one-shot doubling, where if we already have quite a few in play, we can cast these and double the amount that we have in play. Growing Ranks and Rootborn Defenses will also work here because the Populate mechanic will work here, right? At the beginning of our upkeep, we can populate with Growing Ranks and just create another token. Rootborn Defenses is going to give our team indestructible, which is something we're going to need in this deck anyway, because board wipes are going to be really bad for us, and then also allows us to populate. So that's another route we can go where we are fairly limited on the things that we have for creating those tokens, but there are other ways to help create more. One ones aren't very scary, so we are going to need some other options here. I got Kangi Sky Warden, three white and a blue bird wizard, three, three flying vigilance. Whenever Kangi Sky Warden attacks, attacking creatures you control with flying, get plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. So that's going to turn our 1-1 one, one Pegasi into three ones. That's a lot more formidable. And this works really good with our commander, right? Our commander is an attack trigger. Kangi is also an attack trigger. So we can stack those triggers so that we get the card draw off of Rigo first. And then we get that plus two plus O oh bump. So we still get the card draw and we get the extra damage. Crown of Doom will work great here as well in the same regard. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn. But of course, we're going to pay two and donate this to an opponent. And then when we attack that opponent, getting the plus two plus O oh bump, of course, we are in a little bit of a flying tribal here because all of our Pegasi are going to be flying. So I got Gravitational Shift and Wind Reader Sphinx. Wind Reader Sphinx is just going to draw a card every time a creature with flying attacks. So that's going to be a whole lot of card draw. Gravitational Shift will shut off our commander, but I think that's okay. Later in a game, we can throw this down. Creatures with flying get plus two plus O and creatures without flying it minus two minus O. So it's going to be just such a huge advantage for us that I don't think it's going to matter that we're shutting off our commander at that point. I also think Derevi is a fantastic fit here, right? It is a flying creature, so it fits there. But also whenever it enters the battlefield or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can tap or untap target permanent. And we're going to be doing that a lot, right? Our creatures are going to be small. We're not going to be getting in for a ton of damage. So getting those damage triggers though, that's something we're going to be doing a lot and we're going to be able to tap and untap stuff. We can basically swing with our whole team and un untap all of our lands and have a very productive second main phase there. Coastal Piracy also, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So again, just lots more card draw. I got Welcoming Vampire and Rumor Gatherer from the new set in here as well that are going to be benefiting us from putting lots of tokens in play. And again, Welcoming Vampire, we can use our enchantment, our token creation enchantments on other opponents' turns to maximize the card draw rumor gatherer it's going to be very easy for us to put those two tokens into play on a single turn so we'll get the scry one and the second time we get that token we're going to get to draw a card instead so those are great fits drawing cards is not going to be an issue in this deck at all the other advantage we can take care of here is because we have a lot of small creatures we can hate on those big creatures so i got retribution of the meek and dusk dawn in here because they're going to destroy all the big creatures and all the, our little creatures Creatures are going to be left behind. So I have a combination of things going on here, right? And again, you're going to want to go in maybe a different direction depending on the stuff that you have in play, right? If you get your Sacred Mesa, you really could just run the whole game with 
with a sacred Mesa and nothing else. Just make sure you have that Pegasus token in play and you can respond to the trigger right at the beginning of your upkeep. That trigger will go on the stack. You can respond by creating a Pegasus token for one and a white that you can then sacrifice to your sacred Mesa if you are a little stuck on mana in the previous turn. But then once you get a bunch of lands in play, you can really start cranking them out. And if you have a token doubler, then it really gets out of hand fast. Pegasus Refuge, same thing. That That is sort of the preferred route we want to go, but we do have alternative routes if you can't necessarily do that. And of course, don't forget, we have our Archon of Sun's Grace, which we can also do. They're making 2-2 two, two Pegasus tokens, which, you know, of course is better, but also doesn't work with our commander. So there is a little bit of that, but I also really like the Pegasus tokens having lifelink as well. So lots of different directions you can go here. Really interesting. Again, I thought Rego Streetwise Mentor was a perfect fit because I wanted the Bant. And then we have the card draw as well. I think this is a really fun, interesting deck. The deck list for it is in the description below if you want to check it out and give it a spin. And if you like the way I build decks, I have a Patreon where I do patron deck techs for my patrons. I also do my Deck Doctor videos on there as well where I help my patrons revise their decks and maybe make them a little more efficient. So the link for that is in the description as well. But that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.